Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another week. We are back. Luke Bryan Show on Officially Speaking. My name is Luke Hamilton. And I'm joined today by Hi. Mr. Brian Herzog. Always and forever. And we are catching up with Thomas Haywood this week. Um, we will catch up with him, catch up with y'all, uh, and then ways to do that to catch up with us. Brian, do you want to tell him how to do that? You can go to uh, the Anchor app and check out the Officially Speaking profile page and click in the upper right-hand corner uh, for a call-in. Or you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Luke Bryan Tour. Please check those out, people. It would be fun to uh, interact with you. I know you would enjoy it as well. And it would be a, it would be a cool, cool little thing. So, man, I'm trying to think, Brian, it's been... I know we recorded this sometime in uh, February, this interview with Thomas, and we can get to that in a second, but we haven't caught up with the, the patrons either for a little while in terms of what's been going on with us. Baseball season, pretty much every weekend, and it's coming down to uh, playoffs here. I know you have some postseason assignments that will take you out of Finkston Ball, uh, which we already were not planning on you, but... We were going to plan on doing some other uh, assignments that takes you out of that as well. So because <laughs> that releases me to go back to Pinkston Ball here <laughs> in about a month or so, um, and you will be still working college baseball, I believe. Yeah, I'll be. I'm pretty excited. I get to work some some postseason ball, and uh, I'm not sure if we can say yet where that'll be. And uh, and actually for this. Uh, this first round, I still don't know where I'm going to be, actually, so I am I can legit just say, nope, I have no idea where I'll be. <laughs> so, um, it hasn't even been decided yet, so, but, uh, but yeah, it has been a long time, so long that uh, you are, you're no longer, you and Liz are no longer boyfriend, girlfriend. You will in, notice in, in, in the... In a good way, in a good way. Yeah, correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, um, it's in a way better way. I, so, it... congratulations to... To Luke and Liz on getting Congra- engaged. Congratulations to me for sure. Her, <laughs> thank God, she is an amazing woman. But uh, yeah, we got got engaged on a golf course, a place we both love to spend uh, as much time as we possibly can. So, got a little video action thanks to my pops being in town for that weekend. Uh, yeah, that's really awesome. She she said yes, so that's always good. A little nerve wracking there at the beginning, um, but. It was, uh, it's been fun. Now we're trying to plan for a wedding this coming October. And so if you haven't gotten invited, we're working on that now. So call into the bod- podcast and let us know you want to get invited. Oh, oh, that's and what, it, that's what I need to do. <laughs> that's to that's how invited? we're setting up our invites is, okay. is we're just basically, uh, reserv- reserving through the Luke Bryan show. Okay. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I got an eye roll from Liz, so that's not happening, but it, okay. but if you do it, that'll be very unique. <laughs> we'll definitely incorporate that but yeah that's yeah that's been keeping us busy uh winding down baseball trying to figure out the last few weekends uh, it is yeah it's that else and time of the college season where it's winding down spring baseball but uh yeah gearing up for summer collegiate ball we just had the west coast league uh, crew chief conference call last night with our old friend john white we had on the podcast a, a yeah. couple months ago and uh, so, congrats to those uh, go, those guys on their crew chief assignments, and I'm looking forward to evaluating those guys uh, when they get up here to the Pacific Northwest this summer. So, yeah, cool. That'll be yeah. a good setup. I know after Austria, I'm going to be busy with that, and then Liz and I are going to go to Prague later on in June. But then come July, I know we're talking about possibly going to Switzerland for a weekend or two. Mm, that would and be fun if we could figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then I know in August we're looking at heading out to Taiwan, or not Taiwan, we went to Taiwan last year. That's so old news. Why would we do that two years in a row? So Taiwan. old. But Xi'an, China for the IRBO so, tournament. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. And I actually just got off the phone right before this podcast uh, uh, opening with uh, John Campbell, who uh, I was able to invite out, and he is very, very excited to join uh, to join us for that trip so uh john is a uh, a, a local uh, college umpire and he flies the same as luke does 
uh, because he works for an airline. So uh, it was uh, an easy call when they reached out and uh, and were interested in in another uh, U.S. guy coming over. So it's going to be a you lot know, of and fun. I, yeah, absolutely. And I, uh, by the way, um, you know, life life happens. So all these are possibilities. Nothing's a definite for sure, as we as we get closer to time. But these, you know, some possibilities are more likely than others. I got a chance to talk to a couple other guys uh, who are very interested in coming to Austria. And uh, one of those gentlemen that we spoke about, he's very interested in coming to China as well. Oh, and wow. If he can, if, if he can make that work. So hopefully he's going to have uh, more answers soon and we'll be able to get back with him soon about that. But uh, yeah, I guess I had mentioned to him before. I forgot that I'd said anything to him. And he was like, yeah, you said something about that. And so we might, I mean, if uh, I know that they like to plan ahead and have things kind of set up. So we'll know sooner than later if that's all going to happen. It's just exciting. The point of me saying all this is exciting <laughs> to get other, other guys involved. And it's one of the, one of the many things that I know you're trying to do with official business is uh, incorporate umpires in other cultures and across the ponds. And um, it's, it, what a unique, it's not necessarily about umpiring on the field. It's the guys that we get to meet. Austria is the perfect uh, example of that for those who've gotten to experience Pinkston Ball. Guys from all over who, of all different levels and uh, on the field, but off the field, they're all the highest level. Also, for those of you who are intently listening and realize that Brian and I do not have that great of a falsetto, at least for radio terms, we are joined this week as a co-host and really the person that brought four of us all together on four different phones and kept us all on track because you want to talk about Brian and Thomas and Luke, you commonly think rabbit trails, but she tried to keep us on track this week and that was Bonnie Herzog, which is Brian's wife, who uh, met Thomas at Finkston Ball this last year um, in our travels. And so you will get to hear her this week as well. Thank you, Bonnie, for uh, coming along. Thank you, Bonnie. Thomas, the man who started this all off for both you and I as far as traveling, but myself when I was traveling with him before. And I'm sure in later podcasts in the future we'll get into that. But uh, yeah, Thomas is our main main man of honor this week. I'm excited to uh, have him on and finally be airing it. And so I give you the Thomas Haywood from Edinburgh, Scotland. Today we are with uh, Thomas Haywood. And Thomas has been the, uh, the link in our chain that has brought Luke and I over to Austria to umpire. And then this last year, 2018, we were able to branch out a little further and umpire in London with Thomas and then branch out even a little further and umpire in Taipei with Thomas. Uh, we mentioned him in the first episode that Luke and I did together because uh, we talked about how Luke first came about Fingston Ball or getting involved with Fingston Ball. Where are you coming to us from, Thomas? Uh, I'm sitting at home in Edinburgh in Scotland. Yes, it may seem a little weird. Yes, baseball does exist in Scotland. Uh, all very small, but it does exist. And uh, we do have actually well, two of us umpires who are... Uh, there's uh, one other, Josef Kisjagap, uh, who originally is from Hungary, but is now residing in uh, Edinburgh, and there's myself. So we can have a two-man system in Scotland, which is uh, quite, quite a novelty. Well, that, that is a place that uh, we want to check off our list, that's for sure. And I know that's on Bonnie's list. And uh, Bonnie was with us on these European trip, uh, this last year's one, uh, along with Liz, uh, Luke's girlfriend. And uh, we really want to get, we both really want to get back there. And obviously, if we can make umpiring happen in the process, that would be wonderful with Thomas. And then Luke, where are you coming to us from this week? In Hollywood, Florida, I'm back home. Temperature just got up to 80. I actually just did a turn today, so I flew up to Philly and back. And when we landed in Philly, it was uh, Seattle weather. It was snowy. Was it? 30, 30 degrees. Negative one Celsius for you Scotlanders. Mm, well, I will, I will say that we just, it feels more like a spring, a spring like day today. It's about six degrees Celsius. Um, although the snow up in the Highlands uh, is about, uh, about 100 mile away. So uh, I would love to get that and get my drone up there and get some aerial shots. Scotland, it can get very damp, damp weather. 
and it sort of uh, it's a bit of a pain in the yes yes and uh, oh gotcha we can uh, edit that out sure yeah <laughs> yeah so to answer your question that uh, you didn't get the opportunity to ask but um, <laughs> Thomas and I first met at Umpire School in 2007 Jim Evans Academy and Thomas was a photographer that year and I was a student and then the following year we reconnected again I was an instructor in 2008 uh, and he you came back again that year as a photographer now Thomas did you come back in 09 I know that was my last year instructing basically how I got to so I went to Jim's umpire school in 2005 I was uh, useless and I didn't realize it but I thought I'd do something about it and uh, then I came back to Scotland and basically there's not much umpiring, not much umpire baseball and stuff like that. And I felt that I, some mistakes and errors were creeping into my officiating. So I went back to, uh, I went over to, um, uh, over to Arizona, the, the, the Desert Classic in November 2006. And I took uh, with me uh, our well-known friend, Eddie Fannon who uh, it was his absolute love of baseball, but because of his work commitments, he works for a well-known supermarket doing bakery and stuff like that. He really didn't get enough time to sort of do it, and he was absolutely loved it. And then whilst I was out there, I said, I said to Jim, hey, Jim, um, uh, I, um, uh, I, you know, obviously, you know, I was at the five-week school, and I'm here just to sort of tidy up some of my umpiring, but... And I know you de generally ban cameras on the field, but if I were to take photos on the field just when I'm not doing anything, as in anything else, uh, and I then share it around to everybody, were you okay with that? He went, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. And uh, so then halfway through, he went, Tom, would you like to come and uh, to come and photograph the entire umpire school for the whole period? And I could manage the four weeks. And then in subsequent years, I think I did sort of like two weeks here, two weeks, uh, so two weeks, maybe not, maybe two and a half weeks. Um, and I tended to go more in the um, in the camp game uh, time of the uh, camp games time of the year, because of the of the of the thing because it was so much more interesting in that you could get set situations set up and stuff like that, you know, situation. more action going on. Yeah, more action going on, more with Sarge having a meltdown, you know, that sort of stuff. Which, after my second year of uh, teaching, was rather predictable. But I didn't know it at the time as a camper, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and, and hearing Sarge around the entire entire uh, field, uh, the five fields. Thomas, did you say you started doing that in 2005? I started, I went to umpire school in 2005. So were you at Jim Evans in 2006 taking pictures? Uh, no, not at the big school. I did. It was it was at, at the, the Desert, Desert Classic, Classic in it. November two Desert Classic New, November two thousand and six, and then Jim went. J Jim asked me to go and take photos, and uh, I've taken tons and tons of photos. In fact, there's a picture on my wall of from that year two thousand and seven, where I put a humongously large. Um, I've got a humongously large, um, uh, sort of like, I would describe it as A1 picture of a collage of photos uh, from 2007. And I've got pictures, say, of Chris Siegel in catcher's gear with red instructor's cap. Now, Chris, obviously, being a major league umpire. And I've got Quinn Walcott. I've got Craig Barron. I've got... Um, uh, uh, I've got uh, so predictably I've got uh, oh for Andy Russell oh yeah um, yeah the the yeah, uh, the Joe Mikulik situation Brent, yes and the Brent Persinger and then I've also got Rio Cortesio up there and uh, what else have I got well obviously the Sarge and his gym and then oh yeah actually yeah I've got that I've, you remember that picture of Sarge having a meltdown of course I've actually got it in the collage I've got it in this collage. Uh, and oh yeah, and I've got Tim Easton, Tim Easton, uh, studying his coffee cup with great intensity. <laughs> he was he, Tim Easton was a character man. That guy was a good one. He was a good one. He was good. Good laugh, so, Tim. Was, Thomas, yeah. what what made you start umpiring like in the first place? Like, what's the what got you into it in the very beginning? 
rewind. Uh, 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 uh. I went to um, I I went to a second year of university to Central Washington University, Ellensburg, Washington, in ninety seven ninety eight. And when you're out there, you don't escape all the American sports. And one of them, of course, is baseball. And so I went to I went to uh, just watch the games. Um, although I, I followed the Mariners and stuff like that at the time, but never really got to see a game in 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 full flow. If you know what I mean. But I always saw it on the telly, and yeah, that was that. And then tried to play uh, softball and was useless uh came back thought i'd try and look for softball and bumped into as you do right next to hollywood palace in edinburgh a baseball team called the edinburgh diamond devils number oh well okay so they taught me to throw they taught me to catch not that they can do either very well these days but uh not that's here there and um uh i did for three years i tried to uh, play generally what was happen would happen is I shove in the last inning right field where in the uh, where it caused least damage and those tend to be more in the admin area of the team and that, all that but uh, uh, I thought right let's go and um, let let uh, and there's no umpire so I thought I'd try and put my best foot forward in 2004 and was generally shouted at like major hassles on the field because, but then nobody was letting me even try and learn. They're all saying I was useless, and they weren't even trying to try trying even to help teach me what is good and what's not. They was just they they expected me to be a major league standard. Well, patently I wasn't, because there's not much training around here. So I had to go and do something about it. And I joined the Amateur Baseball Umpires Association of Great Britain (ABAGB), which is linked to the ABA in in the US. And uh, one of the guys was a guy called Jacob Pleath, who was one of the best umpires in Europe at the time. And he told me about he, how he went to gyms. And uh, at the time, my, I was working for a company in uh, just west of Edinburgh. And my boss was being a so-and-so. And I asked him for five, uh, for five weeks unpaid leave. And he said, that's equivalent of, leaving, of you leaving the company. Wrong answer. I left the company. So went went off, sacrificed my job, went off. You don't get anywhere in life without taking a risk. Now, n not only at the time I I was quite I'd been I'd been bullied at school. I was quite timid. I tell you what, umpiring umpire school not only taught me obviously naturally about umpiring, but it, a lot of life transferable skills about assertiveness, about being who I was, about being a, a better person. And uh, it taught you to club together with pe with people and in you know in adversity, in that that's the sort of atmosphere that is partly created at umpire school, because you they know that they've got to train you for those situations when you've got Darren Hyman giving you a, saying he's going to protest and you well you feel quite smug when you once you've ejected him because that's the first time I'd ever ejected anyone. Yeah. So yeah, these things carry on. I think you have to. There's no way to go and not become a better person yeah. unless you're actively trying not to be. Mm. If you're going to umpire very school, true. Like... very true. Very true. Well, I I very much took the attitude of look, I want to learn, and uh, in one respect, because I looked knew so little about the game, I couldn't read the game particularly well. Um, but I really did try, and uh, I think the other thing that never prepared me was the fact that my quad muscles kept on tightening up, but nobody told me how to fix it. <laughs> you know, like uh, several several years later, they brought in a, in a massage uh, therapist uh, who offering to a massage to the to the, the students on bits that were rather too tight, and um, what actually happened. Uh, was they said, wow, we've never seen quad muscles so tight, you mm -hmm. know, quad, uh, quadriceps so tight on on the top of the top of the thighs and stuff like that. It was just like they they said we couldn't believe that what we were seeing, and uh, that so that's not surprising. So that stopped me running, but uh, at the same time I was trying to be a, a team player, and they, I was very much noticed for it. That's awesome. You know, never I went in never expecting ever to go for a pro ball. All I wanted to do was be a better umpire. That's awesome. This is what's interesting about the link with Thomas too, is I didn't go to umpire school with him, Luke did, but he was in 
our neck of the woods, since we're, I mean, most of our listeners at this point in the podcast are going to be, you know, where Luke is, where I am, where our podcast guest mm. uh, is from. And, uh, and you got a link right back here to the Pacific mm. Northwest. Yeah. Um, during, during the years, you know, that's 98 is when Bonnie and I graduated mm. high school. So, um, you're, you're, you're right here. High school. Yes. So you're, you're right here, uh, in Eastern Washington going to central. Yeah. Well, while we are, um, graduating high school and then meeting shortly after. Then right fall, where all the well, magic happens. All in and yeah. love right before oh, well, Valentine's yeah, yeah. Day. <laughs> yeah. But when you got involved in umpiring, from there, where did your, uh, where did all your, your contacts, your network of contacts that I know you have because at this point, because I've now umpired in three extra countries than I would have uh, hey, due, hey, to, due hey, to you hey, so far. You, you, have, you haven't even done France. You've done Switzerland. You've done Austria. We could possibly hit you up with the Dutch. Uh, we can probably hit you up with the Norwegians. I haven't done the Norwegians, the Irish. We haven't done Switzerland. You haven't done Switzerland. I'm look. I have not done <sighs> Switzerland. Luke has done Switzerland, and he did it with Seth Hansen. Sounds your game plan has more holes than the Swiss cheese. <laughs> You're incorrigible. We can we we can edit that out. <laughs> but Luke, Luke, you still remember uh, umpiring in Lausanne, where the outfield was a cow barn. Where we got changed in that cow barn. Yeah, aka moment. the umpire locker room. Yes. Yes. I had the I had the third stall from the right. <laughs> but yeah, Thomas, how did you how did you build your vast network of contacts? Like, how did you start branching out to other countries? Well, for starters, when you the I'll I'll just slight rewind the clock. We had a guy called Ron Pope, Co Coach Ron, as we called him, and he's from Ogden, Utah, and he came wanting to teach the and Madame Dell some 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 baseball a guy of a heart of gold, and he said to me and once said, "Remember, there's baseball, and there's the business of baseball," mm -hmm. and that has stuck with me ever since. You've got to it, you've got to be able to grow your network, and so when I so obviously when I was at uh, at Umpire School I grew my network there, and then uh, one of my stated aims when I went to our gyms was I'd like to get a CEB tournament. CEB is Confederation of European mm -hmm. Baseball. Effectively, a CEB umpire, you get international status. You are nominated by your country, and you go out and represent your country. So I know Europe is technically Europe is state, European states are about the size of some of the American your American states, but in reality, it is an international game as opposed to an interstate game that you probably have um, over in in the USA. Um, but certainly, I went to some of these um, in two thousand six to the Maxim Royal Greys in Antwerp and in Belgium. And so I learned some there. And then one of the things we noticed was the standard umpiring wasn't very good. And having done several um, the Jim Evans classics, five day things, I went to Jim and I said, um, we'd like to do a classic in Europe. How about it? And so Jim went, yeah, OK, I'll do it. And he, Jim was really decent. And uh, together with the French Federation, I set up in 2008, I think it was, we did the Jim Evans European Classic in Rouen, in Normandy, in France. Now, when you do about five or six of these, and you have about 25 to 30, um, th 30 umpires going to each um, classic, you soon build up a network pretty quickly. So we did them in Rouen, in um, Prague in the Czech Republic, we did in Wiel in Switzerland, we did Adnang Puchheim in Austria, which is right near Salzburg, and we also did it in uh, the Netherlands as well. And uh, sadly, between us, we felt we'd put in enough effort. <laughs> you know, nobody else was taking out the baton, so the days have unfortunately have sort of hit a bit of a dead end for the moment. Um, because, you know, I have my own business to run and setting up one of these things is a lot of work. Yeah, definitely. It does make sense that you had uh, a pretty quick connection with everybody through the Jim Evans classics, as you say. That, I mean, Jim Evans is basically a god, rightfully so, in European umpiring. Um, you can where Jim Evans, you can see Jim Evans Academy stuff over there. It's kind of cool. You know, to be to be honest, the Jim Evans is it's because of so many umpires have gone over. 
to do the five week school, like for example, Thomas Bayer um, from David Kohanek uh, from the Czech Republic, who was the CEB umpire of the year this year. And you've got, um, you had also Serge Makokochechev, who from France, who did the World Baseball Classic. I mean, I myself managed, I was invited uh, in Sweden in, in 2009 to umpire training games for the Baseball World Cup. And I had the uh, pleasure and the honour of umpiring Sweden against um, the Olympic champions at the time, um, South Korea. Hmm. Okay, so something that I want to know from uh, Thomas mostly, from Luke secondly, and from Brian, I guess you can chime in if you want. But Thanks for that, honey. Love you. Uh, what's the <laughs> favourite place you've ever umpired? Mm, favourite place I've ever umpired? Mm. One that sticks out, I must admit, was that over in Australia. Yes, I have about 19 countries of umpiring to my name. And this one was down Did you say 19? In, uh, 19 countries. South of Sydney. 19. You've, you've 19, umpired in 19 uh, countries? 19, I yes. Was feeling, I was I feeling pretty fancy on myself the other day, for like <laughs> five or six countries, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, thank, thanks to Jim Evans. Thanks to Jim Evans. Um, yeah, nineteen countries. So if you include, uh, if you include nineteen countries, if you include, um, uh, so Japan, uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, you include uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, Turkey. Uh, These USA, are all your favorites. Um, Taiwan. No, no, no. I'm saying where I've umpired. Australia, Australia, Germany. I mean, the favourite one was the, over in was in uh, Cronulla in uh, Australia. And it was oh. a cricket pitch. So it uh, had a low, low picket fence. And so they had the but the idea of the baseball down set back at, from the uh, at the widest part of the oval. And uh, you had this outfield, this, this, uh, this, the outfield was basically, beyond the outfield was a, a, a marina with boats in it. And the idea was to get a home run, was to basically get the ball in the water. Obviously, you wouldn't see the ball again, but this was, uh, the, the, the view from this was just, it was just quite something. And uh, the, just one thing there was, um, if there's no need to worry about awarding extra bases for an overthrow at first or third, because the field did it for you. Yeah. That one was one that has definitely left an, an impression on me. Um, certainly another one that has left an impression was it in, in Taipei, mm -hmm. you know, in a stadium. We don't get to umpire in stadia, right. big stadia in uh, the UK. I wondered about that because I would have to say my most memorable experience was going to Finland when I got to umpire with you for the first time. <laughs> and you're like, don't get your hopes up. And, you know, I, I didn't really know what to expect or whatever. But the fact that we played the Finnish national finals in Helsinki, I mean, I don't know, this is probably the biggest stage of Finnish baseball. And we're playing on the all dirt field. Yeah. And uh, that to me, and we were rain rained out the first day. Oh no! Do you do you remember? I've got a, I've got a picture of it, um, Luke. Oh, oh, of course. When uh, yeah, I got a picture of it just before, and then we had a forty minute downpour. And I mean, I kid you not, it was just an absolute drenching, and the whole thing was underwater in forty minutes flat. Yeah, but to be comparable, I think it's funny because your experience of that's your everyday. Yeah, is umpiring in fields like that that are just kind of makeshift or what have you and yeah you know i we umpire they didn't have tarps they could unroll and pull over no 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 uh, outfield tarps on this field <laughs> so i'm hearing the violin playing just there so it's just <laughs> it, it's funny to me the most remarkable or memorable or for me places like that and uh mm. you're like man you know Taiwan. That's really cool to work in a stadium and i'm not taking that that back i mean we do work in a lot of stadiums here mm. even a lot of the colleges that are that are D1 or the upper level have a lot of nice stadiums. Um, and so it's kind of what we've mm. worked in minor league ball. But they kind of all run together versus I'll never forget Finn, Finland. Mm. That's amazing. Brian, do you have a favorite? Yeah. And remember, I, Belling we're on the, uh, Bellingham doesn't count as Canada and El Paso doesn't count as Mexico. Yeah, close enough. 
<laughs> if you can see it from there, you might as well be there. If you can see it from where you're working. No, no, you haven't crossed the border. I might as well be Mexico. But, um, no, I, I think because we're on the other side of it now and the whole experience, uh, Taipei uh, has to be like, I don't ever want that heat again. I don't ever want that travel day again. Oh. I don't ever want a lot of things like, and, and, and for me, the stadium was like, because there's most, most of the time, 50 people in it. It wasn't that big a deal type of thing, but, uh, but it was, no. it was fun to hear, you know, like Scott Barry commented on it, like, oh yeah, I worked, I worked there too. And, um, uh, so it was kind of fun to, to be like, conversing with guys back home who had, who had worked there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, just the overall experience. Yeah, yeah. And now that we had that travel day involved with that trip on the backside too mm. and but now that mm. we're on the backside mm. of that trip <laughs> i can look back on it fondly yeah. but it was that was quite yeah. the experience I, 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 I must admit though brian um uh, the uh that that heat was something i've never experienced before never as you say yeah. i kid you not it we it, we were drinking we were drinking half a liter, no, a liter of water. Was it half a liter of water every ten to fifteen minutes? Oh yeah. And not needing to go, not needing the bathroom once. Uh, it literally was as we, and we went dripping down, you know, stuff like that. It was just just the way it went. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was bizarre. Nobody wore their, uh, nobody wore their jackets even for the night games there. Well, if we if we had had mm, some uh, yeah. some of the Venezuelan guys with us, they would have worn their jackets. So. I lucked out missing missing that shift. That's God. for sure. It, it, mm. I well, hated that in Venezuela, mm -hmm. mid seventies, so, and you're wearing your jackets. So then, in a, opposition to that last question, Thomas, where is a country that you want to umpire that you've never been? Where Ooh. would I like to go? I've never done Canada. Oh, um, that's easy. I've never done Canada. Yeah, I would. Uh, I've uh, and. Somewhere, somewhere, I was thinking. Um, I've done been in the US. I'm, I'm just sort of got the world, the world here, if you right. know what I mean. Uh, and I've done South Korea would be nice. I've done J Japan, Singapore. I've got we've got our friend Matt Lee. He could fix me up without even thinking about it. And I know that I could get fixed up with the with Hong Kong probably. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of the of the most unusual baseball teams teams I'm talking here that I've umpired was the Pakistani national team. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in the Netherlands, but yeah, a um, Canada. Yeah, set, set Canada would be one. Just it'd be nice to do. And I've got several people I suspect who could help. Oh, me you got us that could help you out. I think. I mean, that's something that we should be able to. You know, and if you were to come in the summer or something like that, you know the uh, the West Coast League, and we could mm. we could wander up there to see a couple of games. Yeah. Um, they're covered by a different group of umpires, but uh, I, I'm sure I, we could link I, up I, with I, to get you some baseball up there too, and we could work together maybe. I, I, and you know what? You know what? For 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 laughs and giggles, I'd love to be able to go back to Central mm -hmm. uh, Central, as we called it, Central Washington. Oh, Uni I'll take and you. Umpire on the uh, umpire on their field. I'll take you. An umpire on the field because that'd be a full circle. Yeah, would, brother, would I, I have a uh, I can't tell you when it is because I can't say it on the podcast, the dates and whatnot. But I have a I have a series out at Central Washington University. Uh, this uh, oh that, that this spring that would be back of the net. That would be yeah this spring. This when, spring. Oh, it's, it's let, yeah. It's this spring. Let me know. I'll obviously outside. I'll shoot you. Yeah. I'll you shoot you a DM, be, brother. Thomas, you just happen to be in the stands and Brian happens to go down with a leg cramp or something. I mean, you've got to jump on in his place. Yeah, I <laughs> might happen to have umpire gear In with the me. stands, in your plate <laughs> gear? I mean. Yeah, we're, uh, and this, this plate gear also happens to have a great big uh, St. Andrew's Cross flag on right. the back. I the... just want to point out, we, we recognize that Brian's not working a one-man. If we're going to hope for somebody <laughs> to go down, can we hope for somebody else? <laughs> Not Brian. <laughs> True. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yeah. Well. In, in, anyway. Yeah. It certainly, certainly, certainly brings me a, a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, obviously, we have our work cut out for us if we're gonna get anywhere near uh, how many countries, Thomas has umpired in where do you think thomas where do you think if you could forecast out of the future where do you think your end number is how many do you think you're going to be able to check off 
Well, at the moment, I'm at 825 career games, okay? okay. Um, aiming for 1,000. So he's got about um, 19 seasons left, and how, is what you're saying. And how... <laughs> no, 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 no. I, Let's see. So, so Gauntlet Baseball, number that's game, three no, games a season. With how, yeah, with how much high... you dodge plate jobs, I wouldn't yeah, but, be surprised if it But you know, Sphinxton Ball is five yeah. games a day, so... <laughs> Yeah, that's you make true. up for it. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to be to be honest, I'll get what maximum number of games I had in the season was sixty three. But then, given the fact that people start to realize, oh, that's not much. I do that do that in my sleep. Yes, but then when you consider that my average mileage uh, in a season is fifteen thousand miles, and that's excluding going to get obviously going around the world to do that to do Taiwan mm -hmm. 15,000 miles so I can take whole whole weekends away like for example I have to go down to Switzerland if I want to do four games of decent level you know mm -hmm. so it's all things all things relative here um yeah I would love to be able to it, uh, uh, to finish off it would be lovely to say I'd done um lovely to say I'd finished off with 25 countries but hey 20 would be nice to do. I mean, I, I'd need to talk to uh, the, the, the Portuguese Federation, haven't done Portugal. Italy is a bit of its own, in its own world, and they have their own sort of ways of doing things. Um, oh, it would be, be cracking to be able to say, just call a game in Italy, but whether they will have me is another matter, because it's, it's, it's their own federation, it's, it's their own call. Well, I know your your connections yeah. that way ours as far as getting to different countries, but obviously we'll, you know, we love you to death, and we'll help do mm. that as much as we can. Yeah. Canada is a definite yeah. thing. We can we should get you here one mm. one summer, and uh, while yeah. the West Coast League is going, we'll go up and watch a couple games and and try and mm. work some other games mm. together. That's definitely yeah. something we could so do. So no 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 Norway's one I could I've got connections oh, with. Yeah, I haven't done Poland. I haven't done, I haven't done Poland. Would love to do Poland. Yeah. I remember being, I have connection in Lithuania. Um, I do remember being on a field, it was, uh, and they bought out the old fire engine to water down the, uh, the, the, the field. And this thing must have been from the 1960s. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the other sort, of, other sort of things of, I had one game where the sprinklers came on in the middle of the game. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. yeah. I had not a camp these game. Happen. Not, not in a camp it, it, game there, it? Thomas? No, no, no. South Africa would be another country that plays baseball that would be lovely to do. Yeah. South Africa, then that would be a long way off, and it's quite a, cause it's quite quite a one to do. But yeah. uh, while we're there, I may still... as well do Madagascar. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I I do remember I do remember Tokyo, turning up and the, all all the um all the players looking white umpire. Uh, yeah, and I said and. Just, well, obviously, Brian and Luke, you know the sort of the way the conventions of um, baseball in in Asia, how you do all the bowing and everything else like that. And they sort of looked at me and they went, "Umpire, Scotland, Shinpan, Shinpan, Scotland." And so like they they just they looked struck out, looked as if they're struck out looking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so Thomas, we're going to let you go because I know that it's past 11 where you are now, um, and that's about your bedtime. So uh, we've traveled uh, enough together, well, I know I that. Been so. a, have, I, ha, have I been a good boy? Do I get my cocoa? You can, oh, sure. You can have your cocoa. <laughs> sure. Um, but, but, really, uh. so, but really quick, though, um, you, so we have a lot of interviews to go through, uh, and so we obviously want to have you on a lot more. And do you remember much about your interview with Sarge? I remember that was the first one that I saw uh, on, on on your on, yeah, yeah on all the interviews on the list of all the interviews you sent me. That that was that interview was conducted in Austria at the um, when we did the uh, Euro, the European uh, Classic with Jim Jim Evans in Austria. Okay, so you're in person with him in this was... for this interview. Oh, very much. Okay. So. Oh, very much so. And it was and it was recorded on my iPad. So, Excellent. but it, it's it it has it has been there was um there it has been previously broadcast uh, before on Ump Talk. Uh, Chris Kamler, who was actually a gym guy, did the thing called Ump Talk, but unfortunately, he sort it sort of, it fell by the wayside. But I still think it's it's a real real pleasure. Sarge, Sarge, I mean, is is such such a tough guy. 
Um, I still remember one little story when when you got you probably went there. Sarge had to uh, go to the hospital for some medical medical reason, and he was so desperate to get back to the uh, to the field that um, uh, he went straight to the field and get didn't get a uniform. And he walked into walked into the uh, um, he walked into the uh, instructor's room, and they went, Sarge, you're out of uniform. That's a dollar. And Sarge, you've been away for you've been you be you be you've been away from the school without leave for four days. That's four dollars. <laughs> it was probably first to find him <laughs> five dollars for being absent. I might add here though that all of this was put together, that put into the big pot for the the end end, end of course uh, instructors party. So it was it was put to good use. If you know. What yeah, I mean. they wear them out. They they get as much money yeah. as they can out of Sarge to pay for that dinner. So. Yeah, yeah, and I wasn't allowed to find anybody. And if I tried to find anybody, then I got fined a dollar for trying to find somebody. Yeah, I was there for this, so I can confirm these stories are true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we look forward to having you back on, so we can talk about some of that other stuff. What are? Um, do you remember any of the other uh, names of those? I can't. I can't recall any of the other names uh, off the top of my head of those uh, interviews. Of the interviews, oh, I've got Serge Makokuchev, I've got umpiring in Europe, a lot about umpiring in Europe, actually, okay. which would be very interesting for your North American Exactly, listeners. that's exactly what we hope to bring, is a little bit of a more, you know, now, um, we, now Luke and I kind of have our finger on the pulse of, of youth baseball around the world, I mean, not a lot, but more than your average umpire. And so if we can bring a little bit of that back to the United States, um, that's I think that'll be a lot of fun. Well, so. well, we, well, we well, we all know that the um, we all know that uh, we've got many um, we all know that we've got uh, many people who would love to have a, a chance to come on over uh, to Europe. And what I would say is as long as they have got a, a particularly good quality, I mean, good, good um uh, good, good uh, quality of umpiring, you know that they can prove it. So, like for example, like for if you're for, if you're a Jim Evans five week graduate, or if you've been in minor leagues, or you do high level college ball, then it shouldn't be too much of an issue of getting you a game in Europe. It's when you don't come with any qualifications that that we then go and say, um, 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 you know, what what have you done, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah, I just think there's there's no real system in place. You know, I, I had the fortunate um, just luck of knowing Luke, and I flew on that pass for so long. I'm no longer on that pass. But, you know, it, it's more of there, there's nothing in place. There's not a machine in place for these guys to be able to uh, figure out how to umpire abroad and, uh, and, and have those earnings pay for it or, you know, know where to go that can, you know, earn mm. enough money to help them make it so that's that's something i hope that uh we can maybe show or, or spur a little interest in and uh, and maybe yeah, maybe but, get something um, going to maybe get some guys involved that, that want to travel so don't all reach do, out at once do, but do, I, I do hope to make it happen no, it'd yeah. be a lot of fun luke do you remember craig barham craig the, i just saw craig recently at the ncaa craig the, craig the yeah Baron. he, he Craig the Baron, he um, he sent me a message this weekend asking me to hook up an umpire for with the Italians, and so I've done that. Nice. Uh, so so it's it's just a it's these little things. This is where um where networking and umpiring come hand in hand. You've got to be able to get your network of um a network of uh, people around you and be well connected. You know, if you can help out other people. It will come back to you in a as they uh, come back to you as they say you reap what you sow. Yep, that's just. And Thomas is the epitome of that for sure. I mean, brother, you, again, I can't blame you enough for the Luke Bryan tour and just all the experiences that I've been able to have umpiring and the connections you've been able to give me. And you know, I look forward every time to working a game with you, regardless of the country. Yeah, I've never turned. Hallstatt, Hallstatt. Go ahead. <laughs> Hallstatt, Hallstatt. Yeah, that was a wonderful. I've I've never turned around so much. And like, as we were, you know, the first year we did Austria and we're going up, uh, up to the top of Hallstatt, which I thought was super high. And then we, and then we get, uh, you know, like one of our Luke Bryan tour profile pictures that I use a lot is from 
uh, 6,800 feet up at Five Fingers, Thomas. So, you know, I thought we were super high mm -hmm. the first time, but as we're going up the first time, just turning around and just going, stop it. You got to be kidding me. I don't get to do this. Like, this is nuts. And then that's when we, uh, we also called Bonnie, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, FaceTime, FaceTime, you know, Bonnie, I think through, um, I think probably through Facebook Messenger or something, we, Facebook we Messenger, called her. Yeah. So she got to, so she got to see, um, we're at the top of Hallstatt having a, having a drink right outside. Pretty cold, but we still had to have a drink right outside because we were looking down in the lake. Uh, I so mean, that's let's the be first fair. time that Bonnie got to see that too. I didn't really get to see it because I was driving to work while FaceTiming, so I didn't really well, get to look a whole lot. Yeah, but the blue was water. I yeah. figured you got that, yeah. I, so. I remember <laughs> Eddie Fannin sticking his face in the phone and go, she's driving a car! That's, that makes sense. That's Eddie, yeah. Yeah. I can confirm that story as well. I was there. <laughs> that Eddie. Well, wonderful. I can't wait to have you on it because we have not only all those guests we can talk about from uh, umpiring over in Europe and around the world, but mm. we have obviously plenty to talk about with Fingston Ball, and we have some recordings from Fingston Ball we can go over too. Well, thanks for being with us. I'm sorry we kept you up 15 minutes past your bedtime. Well, I'll be up early at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, so uh, fun and games. Don't call. <laughs> Please don't call. <laughs> All righty. Well, have a good... Appreciate Have it, a brother. good sleep. Dream about dream about Luke Bryan tour stuff. Oh yes, yeah. on that one, he's out. <laughs> and that was Thomas Haywood. Love you, mean it. Love you, mean it, brother. Be good. <laughs> okay, bye. Once again, thanks, Bonnie, for joining us this week and and trying to keep us on track. Uh, Thomas, always a pleasure to have on. Like I know we've talked about this before, but one of the cool things um, about Thomas specifically is his unique way of phrasing sentences mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just the unique words that we we'll never think to use but so commonly bring out the the brightness of how people try to explain what they're trying to say and I, I guess what a, a moment that I enjoyed as well was the raw uh, not I guess emotion but I liked how Thomas was able to put a face to what it is like he was bullied he was you know not, not helped out very much and um, I think all of us have experienced that one time or another and realizing that instead of becoming bitter he became better uh, for a guy who has no reason to in, in so many cases and I, one of his many incredible uh, personal attributes as well is being able to translate and help other people out even when he's not always appreciated for what he does. And I sure do appreciate that guy. Yeah, he's a pretty wonderful guy. And one of the other things I really appreciate about Thomas, the, he's, he gets so excited about these things uh, when it comes to working in other countries and the things and the lengths he'll go. I mean, he has an impressive resume already and he already has ideas of going to, to other places and doing other things. And we've talked about this before. I just enjoy working with guys that I know. I enjoy meeting new umpires and, and things of that nature as well. But um, you know, Thomas's ambition to go other places and bring others along with him. Uh, there's just uh, hopefully the Switzerland thing works out where we can uh, work with him um, that weekend or weekends. And but uh, but already we do have another umpire joining. Uh, in John Campbell for for China and um, and that is all because of uh, because of Thomas because we and Thomas will be there as well yeah, right exactly Thomas is for sure coming so. yeah exactly and uh, so that that's gonna be really fun that's one of the first things I told John um, when I, I said I was about to talk with you that uh, uh, Thomas uh, who got us into uh, Thingston Ball and uh, and in London and Taipei will also be there as well so he'll get to meet him. I do know that, uh, the last time that either one of us saw Thomas, we were rolling out of the van that is taking us to the airport. And at the edge of this huge acreage of a hotel, there's Thomas sitting on the roadside oh, yeah. waiting for his tour van that never did come. That's right. And the poor lad texted me later we were at the hotel and he's like, yeah, they told me the wrong location. But it was just, it was such a sad goodbye as we're waving. Like, yeah, in Taipei, oh, yeah. <laughs> Later, fella. Yeah. Hope you make it. And his tour bus never came. 
<laughs> Poor guy. He got refunded. But he, he was... Uh, <laughs> I just I laugh now, but man, what a frustrating situation for him at that time. And I wish that we had a visual uh, for you so you could all feel sorry for him too. Now I sound like a terrible person because I really truly feel sorry for him, and I can't help but chuckle. So <laughs> it was a terrible situation for us too because we were just at the beginning of our seventy-six hour travel day, and we can we can look back and laugh at that now too. So I think it's okay. I guess the message I'm trying to get across. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you salvaging. My ideas of trying to have words. Oof. So, uh, in the coming weeks, we have uh, uh, we're going to have our our first non-baseball podcast uh, in in Team Stripes in uh, Brandon Bourgeois, and uh, he is basically where I would love us to be in about a year because they have fifty uh, some odd podcasts out, and they have some video training uh, out on YouTube, and uh, so he was someone I had to reach out to. Uh, when I saw that he is doing this in in a different sport, uh, in officiating hockey, so that's going to be very interesting. And it was myself uh, and Jackson Metz who will introduce to you during that podcast, a uh, young 16-year-old umpire from my area. And then we have uh, Vincent Steo, who uh, is a very young umpire and loves to go to minor league ballparks, uh, well, his minor league ballpark, and uh, basically copy the umpires. Uh, he dresses up like an umpire and whatnot, and we uh, were able to talk with him and his family for quite a long time, and they're just uh, wonderful people out in the uh, Raleigh-Durham area of North Carolina. That, honestly, at the end of the day, that's what this is about. Like we, We're trying to have fun with this. We want this to be enjoyable for you guys, so guys, please reach out to us, and girls, uh, please reach out to us and let us know what we can do to make this more fun for you. Give us funny stories, uh, ask us funny questions. You can be serious, and we'll probably still think it's funny. And again, Brian, how do we do all this? Oh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Luke Brian Tour. Or again, you can call in to the show by going to the official business profile page uh, in the Anchor app, if that's where you listen to this podcast, and uh, giving us a call, shooting a question or a comment or a crazy parent story if you work youth baseball or youth sports we'd love to hear any of that stuff truly anything goes like there's no wrong answer the only wrong answer is just not participating so uh, reach out to us we'd love to hear from you and engage with you and uh, possibly talk about you in a positive constructive way of course Brian where are you off to this weekend you uh, going somewhere fun or you staying close to home I am uh, heading down to Portland for a series, and I'm taking Bonnie with me this weekend. It's oh, be a fun! Lot of, a lot of fun. Yep. Get to see, uh, get to see the grandpa. Maybe, uh, maybe record a few getaway days with grandpa. That's a oh, I thought little segment. I hope to get out there. So we'll see if he says anything funny. That little lapse and uh, pause there. I thought that was your grandpa moment. So that was that was well introduced. Oh, thanks. Oh, you're still in, still in character. Okay, my bad. Thank you. Right. I myself will be heading to Louisiana to try to play baseball. It's a 100% chance of rain today, tomorrow, and Saturday. So stay safe out there. Make good choices, everybody, whether you're on the field or not. And thanks again for joining us. Be good, Brian. Be good, Luke. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. It's like there's no privacy anymore. Everything I say is being recorded or videoed or and the worst part is My I'm, birthday's in six days. Worst part is I'm doing it to myself. I choose to keep recording. And I am. And that's why this is now being heard. Cause I did not push stop or pause. And my birthday's in six days. And also this is birthdays in six days.